This Week in IT. Windows 11 just got heavier, literally. A new update is rolling out that doubles the size of critical OS files, and Microsoft says it's absolutely necessary. At the same time, the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit is gradually being killed off, pushing admins to move to more modern forms of OS deployment. And this month's Patch Tuesday fixes 113 vulnerabilities and one zero day that's currently under attack. So stay tuned for all the latest news. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Azure, Microsoft 365, and Windows. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Chaosoft. This is an interesting one because there was an update in a security fix last year that provided better uh, message integrity and authentication for the common login file system that's built into Windows. Now, this allows different applications and services to use this CLFS drive to essentially write to the Windows event log. Now, in this update, Microsoft added new authentication and messaging integrity using what is called HMAC. Now, this is just a cryptographic uh, protocol. And essentially, it fixes what was seen as a vulnerability in these log files where attackers could essentially get access to them. And it provides a much more secure boundary around those to make the operating system more secure. Now, the side effect of all of that is it's made these files twice the size, and this could potentially cause a problem with getting the OS updated or installed on systems that have limited drive space. So this protocol is called HMAC. It stands for Hash-Based Message Authentication Code, and Microsoft are putting a 90-day kind of learning period, they're calling this. So as these logs are accessed in this 90-day window, Microsoft is going to apply the new HMAC uh, code to this log, and any logs that haven't been touched within that 90-day period will automatically have HMAC applied to them, whether they've been accessed or not. After this window, any logs that haven't had HMAC applied to them will essentially be inaccessible, and you'll have to really do some kind of manual process. I think using the FSUtil uh, capability that's built into Windows. It's like a command line tool. And you're going to have to apply that HMAC to these log files before you'll be able to open them again. Now, Microsoft says that securing these log files puts an end to a long-standing vulnerability where essentially you could use privilege escalation. It was apparently a widely abused attack path. Whenever you add encryption like this to something, some cryptographic algorithm, algorithm, there are, of course, disadvantages. So this is going to mean that there's going to be a bigger overhead when you create the logs, when you open them. And of course, writing to the logs is going to be slower. So it's going to cause a little bit of overhead on the operating system as well. But Microsoft says, unfortunately, it's absolutely necessary. And of course, I would tend to agree with them in this case. Microsoft has recently said that they're updating BitLocker so that it works with hardware-based encryption. So offloading that encryption task to uh, some dedicated hardware module. I wonder whether this kind of encryption for the log system will eventually be able to support this kind of hardware-based encryption to take some of the load off of the central processing unit, which I assume is responsible for this encryption at this stage. So if you're an IT admin, I would monitor your devices to see what effect this is potentially having on disk space. If you think you have devices that might struggle with issues with disk space. You know, Microsoft is saying this might double the size of some log files, but not necessarily all of them. So we're just going to have to watch over this learning period of 90 days to see what really happens with the size of these files. Before I go into the next story, I've got a quick favour to ask you. About 35% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 13,900 subscribers. I'd love it if we could push that up to 14,000 this week. So if you found this news roundup useful, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest episodes. It probably shouldn't come as much of a surprise, but Microsoft is killing off the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Now, this was something that you could download and use to create 
sequences eventually to install Windows, apply certain kinds of configuration to the OS as it was being installed. It was already, you know, really considered a legacy technology. And Microsoft is saying that going forward, you're either going to need to use Windows Autopilot or Configuration Manager OSD, so that's Operating System Deployment, that's built into Microsoft Configuration Endpoint Manager. So they are the real two supported tools going forward forwards. Now, of course, there are going to be organizations still using this older technology. You're going to have to look at migrating to one of those two options going forward to get your OSs deployed. And I think really the writing was on the wall. So if you're expecting Microsoft to support these older tools going forwards for many years to come, then I hope that you already had some plan to move away from them. But now it's official. The MDT is going away. Nevertheless, some admins seem to have been caught by surprise this is of course going to pressure them this year to modernize their systems there's lots of modernization going on you know i wrote this week for petri about the retirement of wins in windows server 2025 of course another legacy component the idea is just to get rid of these things ultimately from windows to push forward modernization i expect the uh, removal of mdt is essentially trying to again push all organizations, not just forwards in terms of how they deploy the operating system, but maybe, of course, about which operating system they actually deploy. If you're going to update and modernize all of your infrastructure, maybe this is now the time to also think about migrating off of these extended security updates, if that's what you're using to keep Windows 10 going, and move across to Windows 11. I'm sure there's something about that in there, of course. We've just had Patch Tuesday this week, and Microsoft patched 113 vulnerabilities as part of these updates. There was one that is affecting the uh, desktop manager in Windows, the desktop window manager, and this is a vulnerability that is apparently already being used in the wild, and this addresses a memory leak uh, in that process, so do get that patched. There are eight other critical vulnerabilities, including remote code execution and privilege access that don't require any kind of user interaction. So it's really important to get these patches out. And the secure boot feature in Windows has a certificate expiration flaw, and there's a major risk of that stop. It could stop working, so your machines may not boot properly or boot at all. And you should get that installed by June this year if you haven't planned to do that already. Uh, there's a three-year-old vulnerability in an old modem driver. Now, Microsoft has decided, not too surprisingly again, rather than patch that driver, they're just removing it from Windows altogether. Why it's taken them three years, I guess, you know, it all depends on, you know, the effect the risk of this vulnerability being exploited, the severity of the vulnerability itself, and the effect that it's going to have on people actually using that modem driver. Now, I would imagine it's a very small number of people, maybe zero, I don't know. But for whatever reason, Microsoft has taken three years to decide, we'll just remove it. So I think that's something possibly they could have chosen to do a little bit sooner. Apparently, there's an industry-wide trend that these patches are becoming more and more year over year so that we're increasing the number of vulnerabilities that are getting patched. I expect that, you know, with AI and the ability to create code at a much faster rate than before, we're going to see this gradually increasing year over year and that these vulnerabilities are not going to go away anytime soon with the current systems that we have in place. And of course, you need to consider using AI in your security operations to try and stay one step ahead of the bad actors because they're using it. So if you don't, you're going to be left behind and your organization is going to become vulnerable. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like because it helps to get the video seen by more people on YouTube. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now about the new Snapdragon X2 processors that are coming to Windows and ARM devices. 
by the f- end of the first quarter, I think, this year. So that's a great thing to look forward to. If you're planning to buy one of those things, I certainly have an interest now in looking at those because I think they're really going to start now competing with the Mac. So do watch that video. I'd like to thank again our sponsors over at Chaosoft. And that's it for today. And I'll see you next time.